Hey there team and welcome to another update on Iceland. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Today is Monday, November 4th. It is about 10.15 here in Mountain Standard Town time, about 5.15 p.m. over in Iceland. And I know I just did a video update yesterday, but we had a little bit of significant activity occur since then. And so I thought I'd put together a short update and let you know what's taking place. Thanks for joining me. Let's get right to it. Basically what we had here was between 2 and 3 a.m. local time in Iceland, we had a small swarm of earthquakes, about maybe 35 to 40 earthquakes occur in an area between uh, Silingerfelt here, just to the east of it, and up towards Stora Stogfelt. So this region right here, this area, as you well know, has been the most active region when it comes to some of these eruptions we've seen over the past year. This is where we've seen uh, the, let's see, the December eruption was in this area, the February eruption, the March eruption, the May eruption, and even parts of the August eruption all occurred in this little zone here. So this has been a really active region here. These earthquakes did not coincide with any other uh, indicators of magma moving towards the surface. They weren't, it wasn't really an intrusion per se. My best interpretation about what took place is you've got the magma storage system uh, filling or nearly full to capacity and now the magma is starting to exert pressure on its leading end. So maybe in this case we might have seen magma re occupying and breaking through some of that stiff magma that's been cooling and crystallizing since the last events. And so it sometimes it doesn't just push all the way through to the surface. Sometimes it's piecemeal and you get just a little bit of magma movement forward. That coincides with earthquake activity because that's that necessitates breaking rock, opening up the conduit so the magma can occupy that. But the Met Office did do a um, update on this. So let's go ahead and just look at that really quick here, um, get you some information here as well. So yeah, brief earthquake sequence on the Sunux Crater series. No signs of deformation or pressure changes were seen on GPS meters, fiber optics, or the boreholes. So nothing that indicates um, the magma was moving significantly, um, and maybe not even at all. Maybe this was purely a tectonic event, but it might also been just, you know, magma sort of pressurizing the system and causing a little bit of breakage there. The earthquakes here were pretty small. They were uh, magnitude one and smaller for the most part. Um, and again, there was about 35 or 40 of them total. At least that's what I counted, and I'll show you that here on a couple of the other sites here in, in a moment. The depth was around three to six kilometers. You can see that here on the Met Office update. And it was pretty short lived, uh, just that little quick cluster of quakes during the, that two to 3 a.m. time period. And then that's kind of been it since. Um, but again, no other signs of magma pushing through, moving up towards the surface. Um, one possible exclamation tonight is magma movements that stopped before uh, magma flow occurred. We might be getting a little of the Google Translate here. They don't have the English version of this update out. It's just the Icelandic version. Um, no signs or changes in the magma accumulation under Svartsengi have appeared. And they did notify civil defense of the earthquakes and informed that experts were assessing. Yeah, so, you know, you can imagine, you know, getting uh, this swarm of earthquakes at 2 to 3 in the morning. Uh, and in the moment, you might think that this was a bigger event that could be taking place. So, but it, it quickly dissipated. It was a one-off more or less. And here you can see the red lines, the fissures here. Here's the Blue Lagoon and the power plant, uh, the location of these hills we use as reference, Seelingerfeld and Stora Stokfeld. And then the little circles there are all the earthquakes that occurred, or at least some of the earthquakes that occurred during that time period. You can see them highly clustered here. This, of course, is the region uh, we would expect to produce the next eruption somewhere along here. That's what this, this conduit and this pathway for the magma to follow has been well established, and it has been followed in most of the those six earthquakes. If we switch over to our... Um, other site here, which is going to go away quickly, unfortunately, you can see here the here's a good end of it down here. And here's that cluster of earthquakes. This takes into account the last 24 hours or so of earthquakes. Um, yeah, if we add all the earthquakes, including the negative values, then we get you know, maybe a couple more. But I actually went through and uh, counted these all up and it was about, I think, 38 or so quakes. You can see the biggest one here, like a 1.06. 
1.16. So 1.2-ish was about the upper end for the earthquakes, but tightly constrained in space, tightly constrained in time. So undoubtedly, all these quakes are related to the same single event. Most likely you had maybe one or two of these small magnitude ones, and then a couple of small aftershocks associated with those. So we might see more of this moving forward, this type of behavior where as the magma starts to reoccupy some of these channels and needs to maybe break up some of that stiff, partially solidified magma that's turned or has is starting to turn into rock that it's going to necessitate some force breaking the rock and that will, will of course release uh, seismic energy another view of those as well looking at our other um, met office seismic data and so here we're looking mainly at those red dots those are within the last day or so so these are color coded based on when they've occurred in the past week. And so now you get a little better uh, distribution, fairly constrained to the Sunuk's crater um, lineament or fissure system that we've seen control a lot of these eruptions over the past. And then finally, because this site is going away soon, uh, Amanda Joe found another site or was keyed into this from someone else and this might be a, a pretty good substitute in some ways it has more tools available uh, in some ways i kind of liked the way this looks just graphically on a two-dimensional map but this is nice here because it does give us three-dimensional data so what they have here i'll run you through uh i just did a quick glance at it here but here we have a, a three-dimensional cube basically so you have uh, grindavik blue lagoon some of these key points in the area noted this is a pretty big region though so this would go all the way up to Vogar over over to uh, Lake Klevravatn um, and then this shows pretty nicely here uh, some of the earthquakes but then the nice thing here is you can see the depth of the earthquakes as well so you can twist this around manipulate it uh, and look at the earthquakes uh, as well I'm assuming they're getting these quakes coming in like real time just like the the uh, Vafri site did but I'm not sure so there, there's that little feature there um, harmonic tremor readings for the area I need to brush up on those it's been a while since I looked at those I'm not ready right now to walk you through those here is um, well there's nothing showing here but maybe we need to refresh the page this is a, a plot of earthquakes over depth and time there we go so this is just the last so here's some of those uh, ones around Grindavik here but then it's going back you know 12 hours 24 hours 36 hours some of these are in other parts of the area uh, on the Reykjanes Peninsula these are some of the offshore quakes here uh, these are the quakes that we saw if you're wondering where's that big three coming from um, well, I thought there was one there oh I think it was on this one that it showed up yeah so I think it's one of these quakes down here perhaps uh, yeah, there's a magnitude three right there. So, um, so it's got that. It has the uh, links to the webcam. So it is a pretty nice site in that it's one-stop shopping. So you've got some uh, webcam links uh, depending on where the eruption is taking place. Uh, earthquakes in the whole country over the past 24 hours. So you can kind of zoom in on here. Those show up pretty nice. I kind of like the way that looks too with the the colors there. So there's that cluster of quakes there on a map view. Uh, and then some of those listed here, the Met Office Hazard update. Um, they put two of the sites and their recent trend of GPS data here. So that's pretty nice. Uh, the most recent lava flow flow field map. So this one goes back to September 11th. Uh, and then stuff on the auroras and hiking and just some other stuff here, 3D maps of some of the other eruption sites. So pretty nice little site here. I'll make sure I include this in the video description. And this might be another link that you add to your list of links that you, when you're checking on these things um, up close and personal. Last thing real quick here, uh, follow up to yesterday's video. Um, I've actually emailed with the uh, video creator of the video that I, I, I talked about yesterday. Uh, he and I had a great email conversation. We're actually going to do some things together moving forward. I might have him come on and do an interview, uh, I, I interview him as a guest, and we might do some other collaborative things there. Um, he did go, you know, it mentioned that he, the scenario that he put out in his video, I guess that would be two days ago on Saturday, that um, he thought it was a low pr probability chance as well. I think he put it like 10%, which is probably what I would give it to. Um, 
but he still thought it was important that that be addressed. And so I think it's just really a case of the way the, the video kind of struck me um, in that moment, perhaps. Uh, but I don't think there was any ill intent on his part. I think uh, he does a fine job with the videos he puts together. So just so folks know, there's no dispute. There's no bad blood whatsoever. Um, everything's cordial and we're moving forward and we might do a few things together. So that would be fun. So anyway, uh, that's a short update for today on this little earthquake swarm. We will, of course, keep you posted as other things develop. Um, and we will see you next time. Take care and be well.